Okay. So in the last uh, session, we were doing inverse function theorem and uh, we were not able to complete it. So suppose function f is defined from an open interval i to j and it is a bijective function. Why I'm writing bijective? Because I want to find I want to find the derivative of the inverse. Okay. So for finding a derivative of inverse, first inverse should be well defined. And why only when I'll, I'll teach you all these things in greater detail later on, but I, I believe because since you're 12, so at least you should be knowing uh, that the inverse of the function would exist only if function is bijective. Okay. And I'll let you know why it is, it is the case also. Why it is that only bijectivity is uh, in, uh, is should, is is is, uh, is necessity, okay? Because if the function is not bijective, then inverse will not be defined. So let's say I define kari the topi vatalko. So why it is such that why for inverse of function to be defined f must be bijective. What do why do you think so? So what does bijective means at the very first place? Bijective means your function is one one. First, I'm just writing one one. I'm just representing your one one. So let's say my function is non one one. Let's say my function is not one one. Then what will happen? It may be possible that two points may have a same image. Is that clear? And this is your domain and this is your home domain, right? Yes. Is that clear? Ashit, okay. Now this is f, and yes, if I yes. if I want to define inverse of f, for inverse of f, the codomain will become what domain, and this will become what codomain. For f, this is your domain. This is your codomain. For f inverse, this will become domain, and this will become codomain, right? Yes, sir. So, now, if the f inverse ki domain is one point, pe do images ho hai. so this will violate the definition of the function. Because for function to exist, the image must be unique. So, first necessity is that your function should have should be one one. It cannot be many one. Because if it is many to one, then what will happen? Then for let's say here it is a point now inverse function for inverse function this will behave as a domain so here you will have a violation to the basic definition of the function that the image of function should be unique yes or no so first thing is clear that your function cannot be many to one it has to be one right yes or no yes yes sir. what now what is onto onto means your Codomain must be exactly equal to your domain. Uh, codomain must be exactly equal to your range. But there should not be any point left in the set of codomain, right? So let's say yeah. there is another point here which is not mapped and it is still lying in the codomain, right? So here you can see this. This is an onto function, right? Because there is a point which is not mapped. Onto ka matlab kya hota hai? Your codomain should be exactly equal to range. So range is here. Uh, range is all these valid points. And there is one more point which is not mapped to any of the points on the domain side. Is that clear? So this particular function represents an into function, not an onto function. Onto means your range must be equal to your codomain. So here codomain consists of a point which is not in the range. What is range? Range is simply the map of the function. Or you can say it is the image of the function. Image of the function under the domain set. Is that clear, Harshit? Yes, sir. Do you want to say something wrong? I'm saying that if range of codomain is full of codomain, then I will say that my function is onto. Ah, Even if one element is mapped, and you say that the function is set to be an onto function, if for every point in the codomain, there is a pre-image. So here you find that there is no pre-image to this red dot. Is that clear? So I'm considering an onto function, non-onto function. Now let's say this is your function. If I have to define my inverse, then what will happen? This codomain will become the domain, and this particular do, uh, domain of the function f would become the codomain of f inverse. Is that clear? Yes. Can there be a element in the domain which is unmapped? No. So what we say that every element of domain must be mapped. 
So, say for example, if I'm saying one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, I'm writing minus one and I'm defining root over X. So clearly minus one will not be mapped. So what it is doing in the domain, if it is, do, it is, it is in the domain, it's not, it must be imaged somewhere now. So problem can, why it cannot be imaged because minus one not be in the domain of X. So clearly if this is a point which cannot be mapped back or it cannot have a unique pre, it cannot have a unique pre image, then there would be a problem. So clearly F inverse will not be defined. Is that clear? Yes. So yes. for a function to be, uh, for, for function to have an inverse, it must be a bijective function. That is, it must be one, one, two. Now a certain question arises that what about Fx equal to sin x? You know that your inverse trigonometry, you define sin inverse x. How do you define sin inverse x? Here you are. This is sin x. It is many to one function. You see, it is many to one function, isn't it? So yes. how do you how can you say that it is a one one function, or how can you say that uh, budget how how come it is a bijective function? It is not a bijective function because it is not one one on R. Right? You, if I say what would be f pi by two, you would instantly say one. Now I would say what is f five pi by two? Instantly will say one. I'll say what is f three pi by two? You instantly say minus one. Now if I say what would be f seven pi by two? You instantly say minus one. How come that uh, this will be a possibility because now if I say Ashit, let's say what what is f one? So you'll you'll be prompted to say pi by two. Then you'll say no 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 pi pi by two is also a solution. Then you say no 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 two n pi plus pi by two would be a solution, isn't it? Yes. Sir. So what does teacher do? They define, or what does mathemat what mathematicians have preferred? They have defined something called as principal range and principal uh, domain, or you can say principal codomain. So what they have done, they restricted the function. They have restricted the function. They have done what? They have restricted the function. So what is the restriction? They have said that just think about minus pi by two to pi by two. Here you can see that your function is one per. It is not failing your so-called, uh, what do you say that? Horizontal line test. So if your function, uh, if your horizontal line is drawn and if it cuts at many points more than once, then it is a many to one function. But if you see from minus pi by two to plus pi by two, it is clearly a one one function, isn't it? So if I say, just define a function from minus pi by two to, sorry, minus one to one, Instead R, I'm writing now minus pi by two comma pi by two. And I'm defining F of X as simply sine inverse X. Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Now I say that my function F of X sine inverse X is very defined. Because now if I say, give me F one. So you clearly can say that it is pi by two. It cannot be beyond pi by two. It cannot be five pi by two. Isn't it? Now I have restricted your codomain. So this is called as restriction of the function in order to make it one one or one one and one two. That is in order to make it a bijective function. I have restricted the original function f of x as equals to sine of x, where x belongs to minus pi by two comma pi by two. So I have restricted the domain of the original function. And because of which I am able to define my inverse function. Is that clear? Yes. This all I'm talking because I was talking about something called as inverse function theorem. Now, what does inverse function theorem says? That suppose f is defined from open interval i to j, and let us say that it is a bijective function, and here i and j are two open intervals. Suppose f is differentiable at x naught belongs to i, and f dash x naught is non-zero. And one more thing is that. And f inverse is continuous. F inverse is continuous at y naught. Which y, what is y naught? Y naught is simply f of x naught. Then f inverse is differentiable at y naught. And I'll, I'll explain you all these things. And f inverse y naught dash, that is the derivative, is simply equals to 1 upon f dash x naught. And this is very, very, very important. You'll find that many a times questions are asked of this particular concept. This is quite easy to see. See, if you define the function 
if you compose the function with its inverse, what you will get, you will simply get x, isn't it? So if I say what is sine of sine inverse x, obviously you have to see the domain as well and all those things. So for example, here it will be x provided x belongs to what? Uh, minus one comma one, right? Or if I write what is sine inverse of sine x, so you will say this is equal to simply x, where x belongs to what? Minus pi by two comma pi by two, right? So after all, f when composed with its inverse will always give you x, isn't it? Yes, sir. And if you differentiate it, what you'll get? You'll get f of f inverse x derivative, and then again f inverse x derivative equals to one. Or in other words, I can write f of, and let's say we are evaluating at x naught, then f of f inverse uh, at x naught is equal to f. Uh oh, where has the thing gone? Okay, we have to take derivative. We have to do one thing. We have to reverse it. Instead of doing this, I'll do this. So that will be you. I'll compose f inverse and f. Okay, so you will understand. I'll compose the other way around. Just give me a minute. Okay, so what I'll do. Uh, f inverse of f. X would be simply X not differentiated. What you will get F inverse F of X not the derivative would be simply equal to one. And then you should also have a derivative by the chain rule. So in other words, I can write F inverse. What is F of X not? It was simply Y not. The derivative is simply equal to one upon F dashes. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I taught you that differentiability implies continuity. Okay. And converse is not true. That is, continuity does not imply differentiability. Continuity does not imply differentiability. A standard example to remember this is modulus function. Standard way to uh, remember this is a modulus function. You see, modulus is well defined at x equal to x naught. So, if I say limit x tends uh, uh, x naught being equal to zero, I have what I want to say that if I say that limit x tends to zero mod of x, it would be zero, and which is simply f of zero. Let's say f of x is modulus of x. So your function is clearly continuous at x equal to zero. But if you see the derivative, what would be the derivative on the left hand side? So your function can be defined as simply x whenever x is greater than or equal to zero minus x whenever x is less than zero. You can take the derivative by the uh, original approach also that I have told you. Uh, but right now I'm just for the for, for doing it promptly what I'm doing. See for all x greater than zero it is x. x is a differential function. Polynomial function is a differential function. What will the derivative? The derivative will be one. And what will be derivative for all x less than zero? It will be minus one. So to the left hand side, the derivative is minus one. To the right hand side, the derivative is a one. So clearly function is non-differentiable at x equal to zero. Is that clear? However, you can see that your function is continuous at x equal to zero. If a function is differentiable, then it is continuous. But if it is continuous, then it does not necessarily imply that it would be differentiable. इसलिए तुम देखोगे हर जगह तुमसे बोला क्या जा रहा है f इनवर्स मस्ट बी कंटीन्यूअस देखो अगर कहीं से भी वो डिसकंटीन्यूअस हो गया तो काम खत्म हो गया वहां पर डिफरेंशिएबल हो ही नहीं सकता कुछ इज दैट क्लियर और नॉट क्लियर और शुड आई रिपीट इट नो नो सो गॉट इट इट इज क्लियर नाउ चलो गुड इनफ नाउ वी विल डू क्वेश्चंस ऑन इट ओके नाउ वी विल डू क्वेश्चंस ऑन इट चलो सबसे पहले इस पे कर लेते हैं इनवर्स फंक्शन थ्योरम पे क्योंकि वो किया कि अभी जस्ट जस्ट लेट अस डू सम क्वेश्चंस देन आई विल टीच यू टुमारो मोस्ट ऑफ द फिजिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ डेरिवेटिव्स दैट इज मोर इंपोर्टेंट फॉर आवर फिजिक्स थिंग 
this. So I'll do that for you now. So let us do questions on differential. Question number one is very simple. Let f of x be equal to what? x cube plus x and g of x be simply equal to what? x cube minus x for all x belongs to it. Let f inverse denotes the inverse function. Let f inverse denotes the inverse function of f. If g of f inverse x is the composition of g and f inverse, then Find the value of Z of F inverse dash at two. So I'm giving you a minute or two. Just try to do it. If you're not able to do it, then I'll do it. How would you find the value of G inverse of G of F inverse of? Any idea, Harsha? Or should I go ahead? Uh, so go ahead. Okay. okay. Chalo. Uh, first thing that uh, see. I said X and X answer. X. चलो मैं एक चीज तुम्हें लिख देता हूं शायद तुम्हें नहीं भी पता हो यहां मैं लिख रहा हूं अगर देखो कभी भी है ना कभी भी एक छोटी सी चीज में तुम्हें ऐसे टिप टाइप बताता हूं ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट इफ f इज कंटीन्यूअस और अगर f को तुम 1 1 प्रूव कर लेते हो क्या प्रूव कर लेते हो 1 1 
सॉरी एफ को कंटिन्यूस प्रूव कर लिया और एफ को तुमने मोनोटोन प्रूव कर लिया क्या प्रूव कर लिया मोनोटोन मोनोटोन समझते हो मतलब आइदर इंक्रीजिंग और डिक्रीजिंग तो ये वन वन हो जाता है ये याद कर लो अभी के लिए याद कर लो और आई थिंक यू हैव टू रिमेम्बर इट बिकॉज दीज आर वेरी एडवांस थिंग्स एंड यूजली टू दई टीचर्स वॉट वॉट दे डू बेसिकली दे आर मेन टू टीच यू थिंग्स विदाउट डेरिवेशन बिकॉज यू सी एग्जाम इज sort of advanced also you need to know things uh, and uh, when you go into the college then you you are going to theek hai matlab jab college aayega then you will be able to derive all these things okay so yeah. okay so i'll i'll whenever i'll do some lectures on real analysis with the senior students then you can go and see their lecture also if you want to not right now after your jee exam not right okay yeah. so abhi ke liye yaad karo agar function continuous aur monotone hai to one one और तुम्हारे केस में अगर फंक्शन का डेरिवेटिव पॉजिटिव आ जाए या नेगेटिव आ जाए तो फंक्शन क्या होता है इंक्रीजिंग और अगर फंक्शन का डेरिवेटिव नेगेटिव आ जाए तो फंक्शन क्या होता है डिक्रीजिंग इफ फंक्शन इज डिफाइंड ऑन एन डबल आई टू आर एंड द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ फंक्शन इज पॉजिटिव देन फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड द डेरेटिव ऑफ फंक्शन इज नेगेटिव देन फंक्शन इज डिक्रीजिंग okay and if the function is entirely increasing or entirely decreasing in an interval agar function throughout increasing a pure interval i pe aur wo interval i ke domain aur pure interval i pe decreasing hai to function fir monotone kehlata hai kya kehlata hai beta monotone theek hai is that clear pehli cheez samajh mein now you would be tempted to ask why i am doing all these things i'll i'll tell you जस्ट 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 अभी एक बार रुको ठीक है यहां तक समझ में आया अगर फंक्शन थ्रू आउट अपने इंटरवल ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस पे या अपने डोमेन पे थ्रू आउट पॉजिटिव है डेरिवेटिव थ्रू आउट पॉजिटिव है देन फंक्शन इज इंक्रीजिंग अगर अपने इंटरवल ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस पे या फिर डोमेन पे व्हाट एवर सूट्स यू अगर फंक्शन का डेरिवेटिव नेगेटिव है देन फंक्शन इज डिक्रीजिंग और इन अदर वर्ड्स इफ ऑन एन इंटरवल ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस और ऑन द डोमेन ऑफ द फंक्शन फंक्शंस डेरिवेटिव इज एंटायरली पॉजिटिव और एंटायरली नेगेटिव मतलब ऐसा नहीं हो सकता कि फंक्शन जिस इंटरवल आई पे डिफाइंड है उस पे डेरिवेटिव पॉजिटिव पे आ जाए नेगेटिव पे आ जाए नहीं अगर थ्रू आउट पॉजिटिव है या थ्रू आउट नेगेटिव है जैसे एक्सपोनेंशियल फंक्शन का डेरिवेटिव ले लो एक्सपोनेंशियल का डेरिवेटिव क्या होता है एक्सपोनेंशियल ही होता है और एक्सपोनेंशियल हमेशा क्या होता है पॉजिटिव सो एफ ऑफ एक्स अगर एक्सपोनेंशियल है तो उसका डेरिवेटिव भी तो एफ ई डैश एक्स ई की पार एक्स आएगा और ई की पार एक्स भी क्या होता है पॉजिटिव ही आता है तो फंक्शन का डेरिवेटिव भी क्या पॉजिटिव ही यस और अगर फंक्शन का डेरिवेटिव पॉजिटिव है व्हाट डज इट इम्प्लाई इट इम्प्लाई दैट एफ इज इंक्रीजिंग थ्रू आउट और आई कैन से एफ इज मोर ऑफ इज दैट क्लियर व्हाई एम डूइंग दिस सी दिस व्हाट कैन यू से वॉट दिस फंक्शन वॉट वुड बी एफ डैश एक्स एफ डैश एक्स वुड बी सिंपली प्लस वन विच इज इन डी पॉजिटिव ऑलवेज पॉजिटिव So it implies what f dash x is positive implies f x is an increasing function, and f x is an increasing function for all r, or I can say f is monotone. Is that clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. Further, if function continuous or monotone, then f is one one also. Is that clear? ठीक yes, है अब फर्दर सोचो एफ इज एन ऑट डिग्री पॉलोम इज एंट इट एफ इज एन ऑट डिग्री पॉलोम मानते हो देखो एक्स क्यू प्लस एक्स ऑट डिग्री तो होता है अब लिमिट एक्स टेन इन्फिनिटी एफ ऑफ एक्स कहा जाएगा बेटा प्लस इन्फिनिटी एंड लिमिट x tends to minus infinity f of x कहाँ जाएगा minus infinity मानते हो f of x का तो बेटा x cube plus x ही तो था हाँ अच्छा अच्छा and according to intermediate value property of continuous function f will take all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity isn't it अगर function tends to minus infinity minus infinity it tends to infinity plus infinity so by, by the definition of continuous function it will take all the values between 
minus infinity plus infinity. I'm not saying it, it will go in this fashion. It may go in this fashion. It may go in any fashion. But point is this. It will sweep all the values from minus infinity to plus infinity. Isn't it? That what is yes. the range of function? The range of function would be minus infinity to plus infinity. Is that clear? What does it imply? It implies that your function, which is defined by fx equal to xq plus x is 1, 1 plus on two function. That is, it is a bijective function. This is what I wanted to prove at first. If it is a bijective function, then inverse would be well defined. Now you can use what is known as your inverse function theorem. If you want to use it, use it. Otherwise, also I can do it. See, it's called the inverse defined. Now, what was asked? G of I think what was asked? G of f inverse ka derivative, right? He was asked. G of f inverse ka derivative at x equal to two. He was asked. Or in other words, he was asking you what will be the derivative of what will be the derivative of uh, uh, g of f of f inverse of x d by dx of g of f inverse of x at x equal to 2, right? He puts it up. Take it right. How we come with it? What, what will be the derivative? So g dash f inverse 2 into f inverse x ka derivative at x equal to 2 would be equal to what? Deekho, meri baat sanne ko shushu ko deekho. Ye hoga? Yaha tak koi problem? What, what is he asking? He's asking this only. Thing. G of f inverse ka derivative at x equal to 2, right? So this is what I'm writing. If the derivative of g of f inverse at x equal to 2, it will be equal to writing g dash f inverse x into f inverse x ka derivative at x equal to 2. Isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. 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 And all of these have, you have to evaluate at x equal to 2. Remember, all of these things you have to evaluate at x equal to 2. Okay, now problem will arise. Dekho, jab bhi kabhi inverse normally define karna hota ta, aap kya karte ho? Jaysse yahaan par kya hai? y is equal to x cube plus x hai na? To normally kya karte ho? Jaysse agar mein kahoon ki y equal to 3x plus 1. Inverse define karna bhoat asaan hota hai. Tum kar sakte ho y minus 1 upon 3 is equal to x. So basically you have written what? You have written x as a function of y. And then you can write f inverse x would be simply x minus 1 by 3. This is you can do when your function is linear. But yahaan fuss jao ke. Y minus x or cube root loge to bhot buri this will become an implicit function so you will not be able to define inverse here so how to find this f inverse now question rises how to find this f inverse are you getting my point or not getting my point yes f inverse niklega nahi to f inverse x ka derivative nikalna to bahut dur ki baat hai to thoda hai apne apne vichar karte hain kya kare yahan main laga sakta inverse function theorem Kaise? I know if I compose my f inverse with f of x, it will simply be equal to what one? It will simply be equal to what x? And now if I take the derivative, what it will be? It will be f inverse fx cut derivative into f dash x equals to what one? Yes or no? Yes. Sir. And now, okay, now, so I can write that my f inverse, uh, 
instead of x i, I have a, fx here uh, don't worry about it and i have this one upon f dash x. so simply i can write this so i'll use this and help you out in this problem don't worry is that clear so now again let us come back to the problem problem kya thi dhyan se dekha fx tumhe kya de rakha tha x cube plus x which is not easily invertible isko asali se invert nahi kar paoge yahan pe to g of x de rakha tha beta x cube minus x it is now established that fx is bijective so inverse can be well defined okay okay and it was asked what will be the value of g inverse uh, uh, g of f inverse uh, this particular derivative at x equal to 2 okay so it will be simply equals to g dash f inverse 2 into f inverse ka derivative at x equal to 2 is that clear ये जो टू लिखा है ना मतलब अंदर टू रख के डेरिवेटिव मत कर देना वो तो फिर कांस्टेंट का डेरिवेटिव तो जीरो ही होता है आई एम सेइंग आई हैव टू फाइंड द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ एफ इनवर्स एट एक्स इक्वल टू 2 राइट नाउ जस्ट पे अटेंशन टू दिस एफ ऑफ एक्स इफ आई राइट व्हाट वुड बी एफ ऑफ 1 इट वुड बी इक्वल टू 2 आई रिमेंबर दिस इज 1 1 फंक्शन सो इट विल अटेन 2 फॉर ओनली वन वैल्यू दैट इज 1 इट विल बी यूनिक वैल्यू इज दैट क्लियर सो एफ इनवर्स 2 क्या होगा सिंपली 1 इज दैट क्लियर यस so your first part here is actually resolved i can write that i have to find the derivative of g at x equal to 1 is that clear yes sir now you will be questioning what is f inverse at x equal to 2 because i have already told you dekho jab bhi kabhi inverse nikalna hota na i'll teach you all those things later on but abhi ek strategy samjho inverse nikalne ka matlab kya hai jab aap keh rahe ho ki mera function y hai y is equal to f of x and it is equal to let's say x plus 1 So what does it imply that you are taking x and you are plotting on on your codomain? Now, if if I if I reverse the rules, so what I'll do if I reverse the rules means if I write instead of uh, if I express x as a function of y. So what does it mean? I'm 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 playing. I'm y is what y is the inputs like values from here and x is here. So basically, I'm using the. So what is this? This is the inverse of. I, are you getting my point? So whenever you have this uh, linear function, no, then इसको inverse करना बड़ा आसान होता है. कुछ मत करो. X को as a function of y express कर दो. So what does it imply? Y क्या था? याद करो codomain. Codomain की values रख रहे हो तुम्हारी uh, domain की values आ रही. So basically you are inverting the function. So your f inverse will be simply x minus. तो ये बड़ा आसान होता है when it comes to your linear function. But यहाँ बहुत मुश्किल होगा. You see here y is equal to x cube plus x. You can never take this. you can never express x as a function of y explicitly you cannot do that so now would you now you would say how to do that so now here i'll use inverse function theorem so uh, you may remember these results but at times these results even if you remember then also you have to do it practically in the exam like i have given you two results above i have given you two results these are the results but at times you will not be able to find where to use these results so it's better what I, whatever i'm doing you remember that okay so just remember this so dekho yahan par aate hain acha tabhi tak samajh mein aa raha hai na aisa to kuch nahi nahi samajh aa raha so for example now i have to find what is the derivative of f inverse at x equal to 2 so i'll write f inverse fx d by dx will be equals what it will be d by dx of x right is that clear rashi yes sir okay and now i have to i have to see i have i have to write two here i want to get two here so what i have to do i have to take x equal to 1 because see only if i take x equal to 1 only then i will get f of 1 equal to 2 right is that clear to you or is that not clear to you yes sir yes sir देखो आपको क्या निकालना है आपको निकालना है f इनवर्स का डेरिवेटिव x का डेरिवेटिव एट x इक्वल टू टू राइट यही तो करना है है ना तो चलो मैं तुम्हें समझाता हूँ देखो f इनवर्स ऑफ एफ एक्स तो यहां से अगर मैं करूं तो ये देखो f इनवर्स ऑफ एफ एक्स का डेरिवेटिव इनटू एफ डैश एक्स विल बी कुछ वन इज दैट क्लियर अब सोचो 
एफ इनवर्स ऑफ एफ एक्स तो आ गया और उसका डेरिवेटिव भी मैं लिख दे रहा हूँ इट विल बी इक्वल्स वॉट इट विल बी इक्वल्स वन अपॉन एफ डैश एक्स अगर यहाँ पे टू चाहिए तो हियर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वॉट 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 यू हैव टू फाइंड यू हैव टू राइट एक्स इक्वल टू वन बिकॉज ओनली इफ एट एक्स ओनली इफ इट इफ एक्स इक्वल टू वन ओनली देन यू विल हैव टू हियर इज दैट क्लियर समझ में आया बेटा नहीं समझ में देखो वो क्या रहा है नहीं आया ना नहीं नहीं आ गया सर आ गया पक्का बिकॉज देखो यहाँ एफ इन वर्स टू लिखने के लिए एक्स को वन लिखना पड़ेगा बिकॉज एक्स को जब वन लिखोगे तो एफ वन टू के बराबर so i wanted to do another question but uh, right now we don't have time so we'll uh, is probably do a class tomorrow i want to do it tomorrow you just remind me any time in detail ah so at least one class you may take okay 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 beta bye bye milte sir thank you good night okay bye